Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Goodman and cross call Gamma. Uh, the coefficient itself and the confidence uh, interval, or sorry, the significance test, using three different versions uh, of this uh, significance test that are floating around. Um, in the spreadsheet I've entered the uh, formulas as they're going to be used, because unfortunately there's no uh, very quick way of doing this. So let's get started. Um, the first, this is my original cross table and I would like to calculate the gamma of this one. So the first formula tells actually in summary to take for each cell the, summer, uh, the sum of the upper left plus the sum of the lower right. So for this cell up here, the sum of the upper left, well there's no upper so uh, that can be ignored. The lower right is everything basically here. So what we need to do is we'll say sum of all of uh, these. Now notice that the last one will always be here, this uh, I11. So I can actually fix that with the dollar signs. And I can then copy paste this to the right. And as you can see now, it nicely takes the sum of these. So because for all of these, there's no upper. So we can ignore that one. And for this one, uh, there's nothing to the right, so that can also be ignored. For this one, uh, some upper left, uh, still there's no left, so there's only the sum of the lower right, which would be in this case the sum of, uh, be careful here, uh, these. Again, we can fix, oh, not all of them. Uh, I only want to fix the I11 with the dollar sign. F4 is a shortcut to toggle if you press F4 uh, multiple times, it will toggle through the different options with the dollar signs. If I copy this now to the side, that seems to be still okay. However, uh, for this one, I do have an upper left, so I also need to add in this one. And for the next one, it's going to be the sum of actually everything on top of it and I can fix that the first one should be always there copy it to the side again and as you can see it nicely takes the sum of the upper left and the lower right and with the last one there is actually no nothing to the uh, right of this one so the first part of the sum needs to be removed which brings us to the next one, which similar works actually similar as this one, where the uh, it's the sum of the lower right. So we can copy paste this uh, down, and we can also do that even one further down, so that for the last one, it's also already adding that sum in. Copy it again to the side, and now we need to add again the sum of everything to the upper left, which is these two. As you can see, this is getting quite tedious, but okay, uh, just hang in there. This is gonna be the sum of all of these. And copy paste again, and the sum of all of these. And the last one is, again, there's nothing to the right, so that should actually be removed. So I'll copy paste the one above it, and now it nicely gives me the sum of everything there. I can actually copy paste this one down because every time that will be only the sum of the upper left. So this one is the sum of the lower right and what will happen if we copy paste this one down? Let's see. Okay, it needs to sum up all of these actually and we can perhaps actually fix some of this. It will always be the first one so if I copy paste this to the side, it should nicely do both of them. And for the last row, there's actually nothing underneath, so this one remains empty. And for this, it's actually only the sum of everything to the left, because there are no cells underneath it. So this needs to be deleted. And then I should be able to copy paste this one straight through and just to verify okay that's all of those well that's a lot of work uh, not hard work well it's uh, um, 
it's a lot of work but it's not that difficult you just have to keep very good track the next one is the opposite so it's the lower left plus the sum of the upper right so that means here there is no lower left and there is no upper right so this one remains blank and for this cell we have the lower left which would be the sum of everything at the lower left so that's these plus anything that's above it but there's nothing above it so we can simply add this one and let's fix that first one um, well at least the last one needs to be fixed e this one needs to be fixed so now if we copy paste this should nicely give me the sum of those and this is the sum of those and copy paste f2 you can check and that seems to be okay the next one is the sum of the lower left still no lower lefts but now there is an upper right so these are going to be the sum of uh, these and actually because we're going to be copy pasting this down I can fix the row of the first one so the first cell will always be uh, there if I copy paste it down I should get here the sum of the upper right parts these are cells that actually have both so here I need the lower left so that's the sum of indeed uh, these and then plus the sum of the upper rights yes so that's those plus those and is that correct yes it's a bit odd that this one is 17 and this one is 17 just checking uh, 9, 10, 13, yeah. Ah, because those add up together to 4. These 4, and these are also 4. Ooh. Um, Let's continue. Sum of the lower left. So that's uh, these. Plus the sum of the upper right. That's these. And let's see if we can perhaps... Uh, simplify this a little bit by adding some dollar signs um, for this row at least it's going to be always starting there and it's going to be ending there so let's see what happens if we copy paste uh, seems to be good and the last one is just always the sum of the lower left so we can copy paste this one and actually it needs to be one further down needs to be like this so it's actually not the first one that I want to uh, block it's the last one that I want to block and then I can probably copy paste this down yep and that leaves uh, these um, if I copy this one down I get the sum of uh, those but actually that needs to be like uh, this if I copy it now to the side it nicely works and here also it seems to be working again copy the middle one down it needs to sum up only these we can adjust that okay copy paste again and copy paste again and the last row are always the upper ones so let's see if we copy paste oops that didn't work well it needs to be these so I need to fix actually the uh, I10 needs to be fixed I10 yes yeah, seems like it and then this one shouldn't be fixed so let's see what happens if we copy paste does it then take the upper right yes Finally, we're done. This was the most amount of work, actually. Um, perhaps you skipped the video, but it's quite tricky too, and you quickly can make mistakes. Um, then the next one is simply uh, these values multiplied by the observations in the particular cell. So this one will go very quickly. You can simply say it's this value times 
this value and then we can copy paste all of them so that goes a lot quicker and then we do the same for the other one which is then the observed amount multiplied by the discordant numbers and copy paste and we finally have all of them now the p-value is then or actually uh, the value for p it's not the the p-value is the sum of all of these which are if I'm not mistaken the concordant pairs and this one will be the sum of these which are then the discordant pairs sometimes they're reported with half of them so divided by two so you'll see those instead and then we can finally calculate gamma which is actually the difference between these two divided over the total of these two so in this case it's a 0 0.013 now to calculate the corresponding significance the it depends a little bit on which method you're using the most basic one is this formula up here which uh, uses n and n is here the number of samples so it's the sum of uh, these and then the formula for the z value is simply gamma multiplied by the square root of the addition of these two plus this one divided by that number in our sample times 1 minus gamma squared and then we close all the parentheses and we should get our z value then to calculate the significance of a z value we can use 2 times 1 minus norm s and dist that's the old function and just in case take the absolute value of that z value and we get our result um, you can also use the newer function which if I copy paste this is actually norm uh, norm dot s dot dist uh, but that function does require an additional input which is whether or not you want it to be cumulative and in this case we want that to be true so that's the same result that's the fastest way of calculating the significance but um, it's a bit uh, f uh, perhaps it's not the most accurate one in R I discovered they're using what is known as the asymptotic standard error uh, under the alternative hypothesis which has this scary looking formula and for that we need to compute for each cell this value which is the observed value so going all the way back up multiplied by uh, let's see the Q and we need to fix that so put dollar signs multiplied by CO which was up here and then it was a minus the P which was this one with an F4 again times the DI which were uh, these okay and then we close those and we put the square in we copy paste these results and then the asymptotic standard error is the sum oh sorry is four times the square root out of the sum of all of these and then divided by just to be sure the P plus the Q and then squared and that should give us uh, did I close the yeah that should give us the asymptotic standard error and then the Z value is the gamma and I'll lock that one because I'll be using it later again divided by the ASE 
and the standard, uh, the significance can then be calculated in the same way as before. So either using the old norm as this or the new norm dot as this. In SPSS, they use the asymptotic standard error under the null hypothesis, which is slightly different. And then again, we need a small formula, which is the observed values multiplied by the difference between the CO and the DI. So the this one minus this one. And let's see, yeah, and then those results get squared, and you might have heard I just got an email. And the asymptotic standard error under the null hypothesis is then two times the square root out of all of these, and then divided by, oh, sorry, this it's the square root out of the sum of all of these. And then actually minus p. Mm, oh, p is not is up here. Minus q. Yep. And then we need to square that result. And then we need to divide by n, which was up here. And then we can close all the parentheses. And then we need to divide by p plus q. All right. And then finally, the z value is now gamma divided by the asymptotic standard error. So that's the same as the previous one. And the significance is calculated in the same way. So here's the gamma is. Uh, up in E45, and this one is that A standard asymptotic standard error, and this is those significance. Well, that was a long ride <laughs> just to uh, get some uh, various results. As you can see here on the left, I actually created a small uh, function that can do this in one go. Um, I called it GK for Goodman uh, cross call uh, gamma. It takes as an input a cross table. And then, depending on your output, this is uh, output 4 will give you the P, output 5 will give you Q, uh, output 1 will give you gamma. And if you uh, don't select a specific type of uh, method, 3 will give you the asymptotic standard error under the null, 2 will give you the Z value under the null, and if you don't put anything in or put zeros, it will be the significance. If you do enter a method option, you can um, get the same results with method 1. Uh, will give you the Z value. Uh, again, the blanks indicate that you just want the significance. And then method 1, um, again, will give you the basic one. Method uh, 2 will give you the uh, one that's used in R. And here, also the Z value. And like I said, if you don't put anything in, it will simply give you the asymptotic standard error under the null results. Well, that was a long video, and uh, hopefully it was uh, worth it for you. And um, I'll put a link to this file in the description below in case you want to make use of uh, that user-defined function to save yourself some time.